On Oregon's south coast, there's a community bound to the ocean. You can see it in the daily morning ritual down at the dock, where fishermen prepare to head out for the daily catch. Well, everybody compares me to Jack Sparrow, and the look I have is myself. I came long before Jack Sparrow. I'm the real deal. He's not. Commercial fishermen like Rodney are Port Orford's anchor. It's a tiny, one-stoplight town in an economically depressed county. But fishing has an outsized presence here. More than half of Oregon's total nearshore fishing permits are held by Port Orford fishermen and the catch they bring in account for about a third of the local economy. I'm feeding hundreds of thousands of people in my lifetime, and that feels good to me. Today's catch in particular is a big ticket item. Dungeness crab, the single most valuable fishery in Oregon. In 2017, this single crustacean reeled in nearly $1.5 million for Port Orford, the lion's share of the town's total landings. That was a good year, but crabbing can be unpredictable. You don't know what you're gonna get. I mean, I've been out in years where we've caught tens of thousands of pounds in our gear, and I've been out years where we haven't caught anything. And now the ocean waters may be changing for the worse. In recent years, marine algae blooms left behind a toxin called demoic acid. The crab concentrate that toxin in their tissues and they become toxic to us. So we can't eat the crab that have too much demoic acid in them. The state delayed the 2018 crabbing season. Fishermen like Rodney had to wait and wait until the crab were safe to eat. Port Orford was finally given the green light on February 1st, but they missed the Christmas season, the most profitable time of year for Dungeness crab. A lot of these guys, that was almost a four month layoff with no work before we went to work. This setback comes at a tough time but Port Orford is no stranger to cycles of boom and bust. Formally founded in 1856, the town had a lot of promise. Port Orford sits on the only deep water harbor in Oregon without a dangerous river bar to cross. For the settlers who lived here, that meant more seafaring days per year. Over time, Port Orford grew into a major hub for lumber shipping. The local theater practically rebuilt San Francisco after the quake of 1906. But the lumber industry declined, and the hopes of Port Orford now rest with its small but persistent fishing fleet. And folks are finding new ways of living off the ocean, sometimes without leaving the dock. This is dulse. It's an edible seaweed, and it might provide more stable income for Port Orford. The global market for edible seaweed is predicted to reach $20 billion in five years. Everything you see here started from five pounds. All, I think we're sitting on about 700 pounds of dulse at the moment. Local fishermen can grow dulse in seawater tanks year long, unlike seasonal catch like crab. When it's slim pickings in the ocean, that means more options in their financial bucket. Also, fishermen haven't given up on crabbing. Some, like Steve Shelton, are getting bigger boats that can go further out and bring in bigger catch. It's so much bigger, he has to build a new boat trailer. My boat I'm on now, I can haul roughly 30 pots to 36 pots. The new boat's going to be 39 by 15, and I'll be able to haul 150 pots at one time. So fishermen are leading the way. You don't invest in a brand new big boat with you know, great capacity to make a living here if you don't believe that there's a future. I, I love the ocean and I guess I've learned so many years to live off of it that I couldn't change my ways if I wanted to. Port Orford is just one of many coastal Oregon towns dealing with a volatile ocean economy. Their future depends on people like Rodney to provide, adapt, and lift up a new vision for the coast. Thank you.